In this short video series, we're going to talk about layer 1 to 3 design. In this particular video, we're going to cover layer 1 design, which is the physical layer of the network. I'll draw out a very simple diagram. If we have a wide area network, and then a provider edge, which then delivers a circuit into a CE router. The CE router then connects into a LAN switch, and then that LAN switch may have multiple links to other LAN switches, where I will only draw two In respect to the physical design, the type of thing that we want to document in this type of diagram, perhaps not at the PE, there would be a demarcation point where the service provider manages this side of the demarcation point and the customer manages this side of the demarcation point. When the circuit is delivered, if we just work through the physical connectivity, the type of thing that we're going to want to highlight in the physical design might be something like which port on the router gig 0 slash 1 connects to something at the service provider side and then on the other side of the router it might be gig 0 slash 2 or it might be 1 slash 1 or whatever but for simplicity We'll keep it to gig 0 slash 2. On the LAN switch, it might have a slightly different um, convention, like 1 slash 0 slash 1 being the uplink. And this all might be copper. So everything in black is copper. Now let's talk about the handoff to the other LAN switches here and here. The links that I've just drawn into the diagram might be multi-mode fiber at one gig. So then what we might have is gig one slash one slash one being the downlink, and by equal terms, it may be gig 1 slash 1 slash 1 on the uplink from the switch down here. And then here we might have gig 1 slash 1 slash 2, and here we might have gig 1 slash 1 slash 1. Now you might wonder what is happening here if you've never seen this before but what we're effectively doing is putting a schedule together as to how and a standard together as to how things uplink something might actually happen here where if we have another LAN switch in the core we might have 2 slash 1 slash 1 and 1 slash 1 slash 1, which means that the uplinks go into different switches in this switch stack, but the same port on each switch. This is how we would work out the physical design in a sketch. Now let's move to a simple network diagram that would illustrate this and how we would deploy it in Microsoft Visio or Lucidchart or something similar. I'll demonstrate how this would be drawn in Lucidchart. Here on the screen we have a Lucidchart blank diagram and I'm going to sketch out in this diagram the architecture that we built in the hand drawing. So first of all we draw in a WAN cloud
And I like to use the standard Microsoft Visio icons. I also have some Fortinet ones in there, but we're not going to use those today. And we will drop a provider edge or a PE switch into the diagram. And then a CE router. After this, I'll copy a few more switches and put a couple down here as the core switches. Perhaps resize those a little bit to make them a bit smaller. So these will be the core switches in the network on the customer site. And then we have a couple of access layer switches that will be dual homed to the core as illustrated in the previous diagram that we drew out in the hand drawing. So if I quickly draw this in and connect it, And then just make this a default style. So we have two uplinks from the access layer to the core. And then let's just say we have one uplink to the CE router. And then we have one WAN link coming in to the CE router on the WAN side. If we wanted to draw, um, let's see if I can rotate this line and make it a demarcation. So that's a demarcation line. The next thing that we want to do is make it clear where the demarcation lines are in the diagram. So it's just a text box that I copied from somewhere else. But I'll make that the provider managed side. And then copy that down here and say this is the customer managed side of the network. Now we have the building blocks in place, we want to start putting the physical details into the diagram. And how I would suggest that you do that is if you have a text box, then I would just control C, control V that text box, where it's copied it on top there. I'll zoom back in. And then I would probably make the font a little bit smaller, like font size 8 or something like that. Now when we um, made the interface numbering up on the last diagram, I think we made the interface gig 0 slash 1, which was facing the service provider PE. And the reason that we only do this side is because a lot of the time as the customer, you won't know what physical interfaces connect into the PE router uh, or the PE switch, which is up here. So our remit is to document our own network. I think just for simplicity terms, if we were then to put the physical interface on the LAN side of the router, then we could make that gig 0 slash 2, but it could also be gig 1 slash 1, for example. So that would be slot 1 instead of slot 0 in the actual router. But for simplicity terms, and to easily read the diagram, we'll just make it 0 slash 2. Then once we get to the, uh, the LAN switch side, 
we are going to make this gig 1 slash 0 slash 1. And we now start planning our down links to and the interfaces that we're going to use that go down to the access layer switches. So that might be something like gig 1, 0, 2. And then that's, so that's switch 1, slot 0, port 2. Here, if we select switch 2, and we're going down to the same access layer switch, then we would go gig 202, whereas if we paste another couple of ports in down to access layer switch to illustrate what ports we're going to use there, we might, because we've only got one switch, but we've got two uplinks, we might use gig 101 and gig 102. And then you can see how this, as you move through the diagram, it gets easier because you can do more copying and pasting and repeating what you've already done. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that we are populating the um, we are populating the ports that we are going to use in the design before we actually deploy it. And this makes deployment very, very easy when it comes to that point where the engineers just have to look at this diagram. They might have created it themselves, but they just look at this diagram and think, yep, yeah, that's fine. We connect this cable um, to gig 102 and this one to 202 from this switch over here. So you might then want to start labeling the switches. So this might be switch switch 02 or whatever the host name is and then this over here might be switch 01 so that's how we build a diagram and just to summarize what we now have we now have a service provider wide area network and that could be the internet or it could be an MPLS network, for example, or it could be an SD-WAN these days with uh, internet or MPLS underlying. But regardless of that, we have the PE router, which then delivers a circuit into the customer CPE. If I maybe start labeling some of these up, That would maybe help CPE01 and then up here we have the, the PE which is a provider edge and then once we once we come into the CPE we connect the physical cable which comes in from the service provider into gig 0 slash 1 and then the other side on the LAN demarcation point um, normally where the WAN to LAN demarcation point is this port here which is gig 0 slash 2 in this instance that then connects into um, if we just label this up as well And you can think of your own host names for these different switches, but I'm just going to call this one Core 01. So it's the Core stack. So on the Core 01, we have gig 1 slash 0 slash 2 connecting to gig 1 0 slash 1 on switch 1. And, uh, oh, actually, I just need to change this now because I've got two switches in the, in the equation. And you can see here how this is an iterative process for putting design documentation together. So gig one one zero one is an uplink to the WAN, 
And then we hand off gig one slash zero slash two down to gig one slash zero slash one and then gig two zero two down to gig one slash zero slash two. And then the same goes on the other side, except because we used gig one zero two and two zero two on this side, we then move up to the next port in the switch, which is gig one slash zero slash three. The other thing, just to bear in mind, I mentioned it earlier, is that the uplinks on the access layer, if they're fiber especially, sometimes they're gig one slash one, which means switch one module one instead of zero and what module one means is if a switch comes with 24 ports out of the box and you need to then put a module in to the side in order to have sfp or sfp plus or qsfp uplinks and transceivers then that's where slot one might come into play and that summarizes a very basic layer one physical diagram. I also have another diagram which is part of the MNB Networks WAN design course um, as an example here. Here is a more in-depth physical diagram where we have multiple different places and mixes of technology. So we have 10 gig links multiple 10 gig links and then one gig links and ports which are labeled just ethernet which could be one or 10 or 40 gig links but this gives some context as to how a layer one diagram might go from something like this which is a very basic diagram for a site to something like this which is for a site but also depicts part of the data center configuration. That concludes our video on layer one design. I hope you enjoyed that. Please feel free to add any feedback in the comment section. And if you like this video, please um, let us know by giving us a like or sharing the content with people that you think might be interested. Okay, thanks very much for watching and see you next time for layer two.